The following problem will be helpful to understand the concept behind analysis of a truss by method of joints. The way we isolate the joints, show the forces of the members and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the joint to calculate the forces in all the members of the truss. Using the method of joints, analyze the truss shown. This is a simple truss and we have to find forces in all the members of the truss using method of joints. We will first find the support reactions. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire truss. We will first equate the summation of moments of all forces about point A to 0. On simplifying, we get the normal reaction about point F to be 8.25 kN. Then, we will equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to 0. Thus, we will find horizontal component of the reaction at support A to be equal to 5 kN. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to 0. Thus, we find the magnitude of vertical reactions offered by support A is equal to 7.75 kN. We will first isolate joint A as there are only two unknown members A, B and A, C. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint A. We will first equate the summation of all forces in y direction to zero. Thus, we will find the force in member AB as 10.61 kN and tensile in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we find that the force in member AC is equal to 12.5 kN, but compressive in nature. Next, we will isolate joint B as there are only two unknown members BD and BC. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint B. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find force in the member BD to be equal to 12.5 kN and tensile in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we find that the force in member BC is 7.5 kN, but compressive in nature. Now, we will isolate joint C as the joint has two unknown members CE and CD. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint C. We will first equate the summation of all forces in y direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find the force in the member CD to be equal to 5.6 kN, but compressive in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus, we find that the force in member CE is 8.02 kN, but compressive in nature. Next, we will isolate joint E, as the joint has two unknown members EF and ED. We will initially assume the members are to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint E. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find force in the member EF to be equal to 8.02 kN, but compressive in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in y direction to zero. Thus, we find the force in member ED is 6 kN, but compressive in nature. Now, Isolate joint F as the joint has only one unknown member DF. We will initially assume the member to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint F. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find force in the member DF to be equal to 11.34 kilo newtons and tensile in nature. Thus, we have found forces in all the members of the truss. We will finally tabulate the results as shown. The table indicates the member, the magnitude of the force acting on it, and the nature of the force. Thus, we analyze the given truss using method of joints.